So in our previous videos, we've covered pretty much all of factoring. We know that we always start with common factor. You always check for common factor because it will make things a lot easier. Then we're going to check for special cases, which we're going to cover today on this video. Uh, and then if that's not the case, we're going down to simple trinomial. Actually, after common factor, you always continue. But if you got one of these two, then you stop there. If the simple trinomial, it starts with x squared, then you know that you look for two numbers that multiply to the last number, or those same two numbers that add up to the middle number. If it doesn't start with x squared, then you check for complex trinomial, which remember is like that little box method, the organized trial and error, and you go on. And then if you try those methods and none of them work, well, it may be that it just doesn't factor. But let's look today at difference squares and perfect squares. Let's start with difference of squares. Um, when you have two brackets that look the same, but one's a plus, one's a minus, something interesting happens. If I go x, if I'm going to expand this, right? So x times x gives, me, gives us x squared. But then I do minus 3x plus 3x, which means that the middle term will disappear. And then I got minus 3 plus 3, it's minus 9. So this ends up being with two terms. Hmm. Let's check the next one. 4x plus 5 and 4x minus 5. Well, same thing. 4x times 4x gives us 16x squared. But now I've got 20x minus 20x, and that middle term again disappears. And then I've got plus 5 times minus 5, which is negative 25, or minus 25. So this is why it's called a difference of squares when I look at this, because that's a perfect square. This is x times x. This is a perfect square because it's 3 times 3. This is a perfect square because that's 4x times 4x, and this is 5 times 5. So they're perfect squares, and you're subtracting them. So it's a difference of squares. So how, when I have examples like this to factor, I ask myself three questions. First one, are there two terms? Second question, are both of them perfect squares? And the third question is, is there a minus sign? Because I need that difference. If all those answers are yes, then the factoring, it's super easy. I'm just going to have two brackets that look the same, but one has a plus, one has a minus. So in this case, 9x squared minus 4. Was that, are there two terms? Yes. Are they both perfect squares? Well, this is 3x, and that's 2 squared, right? Uh, is there a minus sign? Yes. Done. So I got the two brackets. It's going to be 3x and 2. And one so the plus, one has a minus. And it doesn't matter which one you put it on. So the next one, x squared minus 100. Is that, well, two terms? Yes. Are they both perfect squares? Well, that's x, and that's 10 squared. And is there a minus sign? Yes. So again, two brackets that look the same, except one has a plus, one has a minus. And there you go. And then you can have something like this, 2x squared minus 18, that you can immediately tell that yes, there's a minus sign, yes, there are two terms, but that's not a perfect square. But don't forget that the first thing we do is to get common factor. And can we take a common factor out of that one? Yes, we can. We can take a 2 outside. And leaves us with x squared and minus 9 with the 2 outside. Don't forget that too. And is that a perfect square? That's x. And is that a perfect square? Yes, that's 3. So therefore, I can rewrite this as 2. And then the two brackets, x and 3. And x and 3. And then just put a plus and a minus in whichever one bracket you got. Okay, so that's difference of squares. Let's check perfect squares. So, perfect squares, and that's the formula for expanding a binomial. Um, it's a perfect square because it's going to have, like, in this case, a plus b on one side and a plus b on the other side. And then when you expand it, you're going to get the square of the a is the first, twice a times b, so twice the first times the second, and then this second one squared. So if I want to expand this in one step, it's fairly straightforward. The square of the first, which is x squared, then 
twice the first times the second. So that's minus 3x twice it's minus 6x. And then minus 3 squared at the end is just plus 9. Okay. What about 4x plus 5 squared? Well, square of the first is 4x squared is 16x squared. The first times the second is 4x times 5, it's 20x, twice is 40. And 5 squared is 25. So if I was to look at this blue expressions and I want to factor it, how do I tell if it's a perfect square? Well, we look for three terms. Then we make sure that the first and the last are perfect squares. So that's 4x and that would be 5, so that's good. And then we check if the middle term is 2ab. What do I mean by that? Well, if that's 4x and that's 5, 4x times 5 is 20, and twice 20 is 40, so therefore this is a perfect square. So let's go through two examples. Let's check this out. Well, first thing is it has three terms. That's good. The second one is are they both perfect squares? Sorry, first and last perfect squares. And 9x squared would be 3x squared and 4 would be 2. So far, so good. So now I check for the middle term. 3x times 2 is 6. Double of 6, it would be 12. And we got 12. It's a minus, but then that means that this is a perfect square. So it's going to have both sides the same. Not like before, a plus and a minus. It should be exactly the same. So I got 3x and 2 squared. Now, would that be a plus or a minus? Well, since that is subtracting, this would be a minus. Minus 2. Got it? Let's check the last one. So, 3x squared plus 24 plus 24x, I'm missing an x here, plus 48. Well, right away I can tell that there are three terms, but 3x squared is not a perfect squared, but I should not forget one of my time. I'm this up that when I factor, the first thing I check for is common factor and I can take out a 3. So I'm going to take a 3 outside and that's x squared plus 24 divided by 3 is 8x and 48 divided by 3 is 16. And now I check. Okay, I got the 3. Three terms, yes. That's a perfect squared, yes. That's x and x. And that's four times four. So now I gotta check if the middle term is two ab. So if that's x and that's four, four times x twice gives me eight x. So this is a perfect squared, and I can just write it x plus four squared, and that's fully factored.